Before we get into today's video, I want to go ahead and announce a $100 giveaway in this video. All you have to do to enter is go down below in the comment section and type hashtag save glizzy and you're entered to win a free $100. Don't forget to do it guys and I hope you all enjoy the video. What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we have an absolute mind-blowing banger of a video for you guys. We tried to make history for the second time on this channel and oh boy, did we get some insane footage and I filmed the entire thing for you guys. Now, after weeks of talking with lawyers, legal teams, we are finally deciding to post this video of what happened on June 5th of this month. By posting this video, I'm risking a lot of things, but I feel like I need to get the truth out there. I'm going to be showing you all the raw footage of that entire day but I'm also going to be butting in in little segments to explain more for you guys because honestly, it was just so mind-blowing what happened that I couldn't even process it at the time. So with that being said, roll the tape, baby. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we are here at Global Fish Co. in New Jersey, and I'm flying home back to Kentucky today, but I am here to buy a fish to take home with me on the airplane. Let's go inside and let's go pick out something to take home. All right, so as many of you might have saw, we actually came here the other day and did an entire store tour, checked out all the fish. They have a $10,000 fish in the backpack there, so make sure to check out that video after this one. But today we are here specifically just to buy something to take home, and our flight literally leaves in two hours, so I'm already late to the airport. So we gotta be quick, we gotta run through all these tanks, see what we wanna buy, and then get to the airport, and hopefully we don't get in trouble and have to leave the fish at the airport. I don't know what security's gonna say, but wish me luck. Oh, I gotta check this guy out for sure. This is a massive MBU puffer, and he is for sale, actually. This is Mr. Mabu. As much as I would love to take this guy home with me, I think the box would just be a little too big to bring with me on the airplane. Now moving down here to some of these other tanks, we're actually getting into some of the stuff that we can actually take on the airplane. No, this is not a private jet this time. This is actually a commercial airline flight. So I'm nervous. I think this is allowed. I've seen it done before, maybe once. I'm attempting to do it today. And I promise you all, whatever fish we pick out, this is probably the first time it's ever been taken on a commercial airline. So what you guys don't know is I actually called Delta about a month prior to wanting to do this video. And I called them and asked, is it okay if I take a fish home in my carry-on on the airplane? They said, yes, that is 100% okay as long as it fits in your carry-on. So I am acting a little bit nervous here, but I did know that it was 100% okay. And honestly, here, I was more nervous about making my flight than I was even buying the fish to take with me. For any of you all who know me in person, I am a crazy individual. For some reason, when I was thinking of a fish to take home, this is the first thing that came to my mind. Check this guy out up here. This is actually an electric eel. He's probably about two foot long. And yes, these guys can kill you. We're gonna take home this two foot electric eel on the airplane. I'm risking everything right now. We might even miss our flight. We might get kicked out of the airport. I don't know what's gonna go down. This is gonna be crazy. So make sure to stay tuned. Anthony's about to pack it up in just a minute. This fish can literally kill you. So basically the plan is get the electric eel out of the tank, put it in here, go to the airport, fly home with it. Don't get arrested, don't go to jail. Yeah. And also don't get shocked. Don't get shocked. Obviously in that last clip, I was totally joking, but little did I know that was actually a possibility of what could happen later on that day. You guys just wait because it gets so much crazier from here on out. Yeah, Anthony is risking his life because these things can put up 600 volts and literally shock your heart and kill you. I mean, this is the true electric eel right here. No, no gimmicks. We gotta be very careful. They can literally, holy smokes, yeah. boys. Don't want any deaths today here at Global. Uh, yeah, we're good. There he is. Holy smokes, boys. We got him, guys. This is probably my biggest risk ever. Trying to fly home with an electric eel that can literally kill you on a commercial airline. Yeah, the good thing about these eels, too, they're super hardy, so they don't need a lot of water as well as air. This is just a very long fish, so. And I mean, it is a big animal, but they also, especially with the breathing air and everything, they'll survive a long time in here. They literally live in puddles where they're from, so. Golly. And yes, by touching the bag, it won't shock you. Look at that thing. Bro, this is definitely the first time someone's ever flown home with an electric eel on a commercial airline. All right, let's head to the airport. All right, guys, so we just made it to the airport and we got the giant electric eel right here. And so to get this thing on the plane, we're actually gonna put it inside my backpack as a carry-on. Hopefully it passes. All right, guys, it's crunch time right now. I got the two foot eel in my backpack right here and we're about to head inside the airport security. I'm not sure what's gonna happen. I'm freaking out. I'm kind of regretting this decision or second guessing it. 
But no matter what happens, I'm gonna keep the camera rolling, so make sure to stay tuned. Something that I never even considered is what if the bag pops on the plane? Hopefully Anthony's knots are good and these bags hold because that would be a disaster. So this is where things get super interesting. So I just arrived to the airport and we headed right into security. Now everyone there immediately looked at me when I pulled my eel out of the bag. I had nothing to hide guys. Trust me, there was no way that I thought I was gonna somehow sneak this two foot giant eel through airport security. And this is where the craziness starts to begin. Now mind you guys, this is New York airport. It is so busy. So when I walk in, there's a huge line for security. This security officer right here, he was such a cool dude. I pulled out the eel and he was like, what the heck? He was so intrigued by it. And honestly, one of the nicest guys I met all day. So he's picking it up right here, just inspecting it. And boy, did it draw a crowd. Literally 10 TSA agents came over, checked it out. Everyone was laughing about it, thought it was so cool and they had never seen one before. I asked him if he thought it would go through security. He said, yeah, it should, no problem. But when this guy got the eel in his hands, things went downhill. I guess this was the supervisor or the guy that had to break the news to me. And basically said, this cannot go through, not because of security reasons, but because of Delta policy. And then I told him, I said, I've already talked to Delta sir on the phone. They said it was 100% okay for me to take this on the plane. And then he goes, what I need you to do is head downstairs with me and we need to go talk to a Delta representative or supervisor. So he proceeded to escort me out of airport security with my giant live eel. Now, if you guys ever wanna make a scene in an airport, get escorted out of security by like 10 TSA officers. I promise you guys, you will have people freaking out everywhere. All right, guys, so we just tried to get to security, and as you heard there, they're basically saying we can't take it on the plane, um, but I guess I had already confirmed saying that it was okay with them online before this, um, and so now I gotta try to go and talk to their help desk and see what we can do. This is obviously worst case scenario because I gotta get on this plane to get home, but I can't just leave the eel here at the airport. So I'm kind of freaking out right now, but hopefully this works out. I'm gonna put the camera down just to be as respectful as possible because this conversation can get very heated. I'm about to go talk to the higher ups in Delta. Okay, so now guys, this is what I could have never planned on. So up until this point, I was still 100% confident that I would go downstairs, I would talk to the supervisor, they would give me the A-OK, -okay, and I would walk right on the airplane and head on home back through Kentucky. So I went downstairs and talked to the head Delta airline supervisor at the New York airport that day. The airport is super busy, and I'm trying to have a conversation with this lady. Now, I didn't want to film her up in her face because I wanted to be as respectful as possible, and I really just wanted to get on the plane to head home. I wish I filmed their whole conversation, or I wish there was someone there to film me, but it was literally just me alone trying to talk with this lady, arguing why I should be allowed on this airport after they told me that I could do what I am doing. She proceeded to tell me that she had no record on her computer of me calling Delta Airlines, asking if this was okay, and I told her, I said, ma'am, I called you guys before I booked my reservation because I wouldn't book my reservation with Delta Airlines had I know I couldn't do this video idea. So I'm sitting here red-faced arguing with this girl and she's like, yeah, you don't know Delta's policies, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you guys literally told me on the freaking phone before I flew up here that I could take a live fish in my backpack with me on the way home. I'm about to spaz out. I'm so calm in this moment. I wish I had a full-time cameraman. Unfortunately, I cannot afford it. But I'm trying to talk to her. I'm trying to worry about this eel in my backpack. And she goes, sir, I don't even want to see what's in your backpack. Don't take it out. Of course, that raises a giant red flag with everybody around me in the airport because I got a freaking backpack here. I got all these TSA agents around me. Everybody's looking at me. Security's like right there hanging out, pretty much ready to detain me. And I'm freaking out. I got, I kid you guys not, I argue with the supervisor for at least an hour about how Delta messed up. And yes, I understand their policy might say, oh, you can't bring any fish on board. But I was literally told by someone at the Delta corporate office that I could do this. And so I did it. I show up to the New York airport. I do it. And they're freaking telling me to throw my eel away in the trash can outside. That is absolute bullshit. This is literally a live animal. Imagine someone tells you to throw your dog or cat away outside in the freaking trash can at the airport. Oh, and actually she gave me a second alternative. She goes, hey, you know what, sir? You can actually just kill this eel and I'll allow you to put it underneath our airplane. Like, holy shit, guys. Are you all understanding what happened? Imagine if I didn't film this. 
and you guys think that this is it right here, it goes way farther than this. This is literally just the beginning of the story, what happened that day. And I know this is a little bit of a longer video, but I'm telling you guys, what happened that day at the airport was so wrong. I have every news station reaching out to me, wanting to pick up this story based on the things that I've told them and the footage that I have. So the clip you're about to see is all the footage I have of me talking with the supervisor, just because I was so flustered in the moment that it was hard for me to film and actually argue my case of what was going on. I was so shocked that day of the wrongful doing by Delta and the Delta supervisors there that I literally couldn't even put it to my mind to try to film and argue. Imagine you're trying to film somebody and argue with them at the same time and get your point across. So what you're about to see is me and her going back and forth for just a second, but like I said, we had an hour long conversation about what was going on and I wish I filmed it all, but here you go. But there's rules and regulations we all follow. No, I understand because obviously mm -hmm. like we spent thousands of dollars to get here to do this and I wouldn't, like she said, I would not do this if I didn't think it was gonna be okay. And you know, I talked to somebody on the phone, they said, hey Chase, this is 100% okay. Um, and then now, of course, yes. Unfortunately, it cannot be a pet in cabin, nor emotional support animal. Because again, there's guidelines. Pet in cabins are dogs, cats, bird, and emotional support animals are dog, but not an eel. So what I can do for you, if you like, I can refund the half that you did not use, but I cannot accept the eel as a pet in cabin. So as you heard, the kind supervisor offered to refund me for this leg of the flight, basically to cancel my flight that day and send me back to New York City, which was not an option because that really doesn't help my problem. But oh wait, it gets a lot better. This supervisor also suggested to me that I should get a private jet Mind you, a $30,000 flight back home that I had to pay for to get this eel home. Like, what kind of supervisor suggests a $30,000 resolution? Like, Delta, I know you're watching this right now. What kind of bullshit is that? Either kill my eel and throw it in the trash can, or get a $30,000 private jet on the way home? Like, are you guys serious? And mind you guys, I could not have been any more clear and thorough on the situation at hand with this lady. It was actually funny because her partner came over to her during this time, I don't know who she was, and she was like, do you really think that this guy is that crazy that he would have booked this entire trip, spent thousands of dollars on this trip, knowing that Delta said I could not take this eel on the plane. So like I said, I had been talking with the supervisor for about an hour now, and I knew based on her body language and the way that she was treating the situation, one, she wasn't taking it that seriously. Imagine talking to somebody face to face about a serious issue, and she's literally sitting on her computer just like typing stuff up and whatever on her phone and just like looking, like not even paying attention to me at all. I knew she wasn't taking the situation very seriously. And I knew based on her tone that she was not gonna let me take this eel on the plane no matter what circumstance. So at this point, I was really worried about the eel and I did not wanna throw it away. So I went outside and I was trying to brainstorm. I was like, Chase, you gotta get on this flight, but how can you save this eel? Because it is a life, even though some of you all may think, oh, it's just an eel or it's a whatever, it's a nasty looking fish. Like, guys, this is a life at the end of the day. I don't want anything to die. I don't wanna throw anything away, which is just absurd. And so I kept seeing all these Ubers and taxis pull up. So I'm like, hmm, maybe, just maybe, I can book a Uber on my phone and put this eel in an Uber. Mind you, that's probably never happened before in the history of the history of everything. No one's ever put an electric eel in an Uber, I guarantee you that. And so my flight left in 30 minutes. I knew I was gonna be late to my flight. So what I did at this moment was I booked a $150 Uber back to New York City, literally sent up a prayer that this fish would get there. That way I didn't have to throw it away. Guys, we had not planned for this situation prior. I, like I said, I thought I was 100% gonna be able to get on this airplane, no problem, based on what Delta had told me weeks before this. So now what you guys are gonna see is me put it in the Uber. So I'm just gonna hit play for you guys, watch this entire thing because I cannot believe it went down this way. My flight's about to leave. I'm gonna be late for it. I'm probably even gonna miss it. But what I'm gonna do is I call my boy Nate that lives in the city. Nate, aquarium showcaser, also runs Monster Aquatic Fish with me. And basically I'm gonna Uber this eel to his crib in downtown New York City. He's gonna pick it up for me and give it to one of the local pet stores there. That way this eel doesn't die and just get thrown in the trash. I was like, yeah, I'm just gonna have to throw this eel in the trash. And the people were basically like, oh, we don't care. Uh, sorry, it can't come on the plane. 
I was like, this thing's gonna die. They did not give a rip. So I'm freaking freaking out right now. My heart rate's going like 100 miles an hour, but I'm gonna call an Uber right now, put the eel in there. Hopefully the Uber driver is honest. It's like 150 bucks to Uber to the city. And hopefully this thing gets to Nate's house. And if it does, I'm gonna have Nate pick up the camera and just film from there and see what happens. This is insane. All right, guys, off it goes in the Uber right now. Back to New York City to Nate. We just spent $200 on this eel and now they're basically not letting us take it on the plane. Off it goes, guys. Our $200 eel that Delta said we could bring on there, crazy. The Uber driver just looked at me guys like I was a madman. I said, hey, I need to bring this package downtown right now. It's $150 for the Uber. I paid $250 for the eel at Global Fish Co. Uh, frick Delta for allowing this. This is an absurdity. Um, basically telling me, yes, I could do this. Now I get here, they say, hey, you can't do this. Um, crazy, I spent thousands of dollars on this trip to come here just for this one thing. And this is what happens. So now I'm gonna to try to catch my flight. Nate's gonna grab the camera. Hopefully it makes it there. Hopefully no one steals it. The only two options we had was throw it away or send it to Nate's house and hopefully he's there. So I'm gonna call him right now. This is so stressful. This sucks so bad. All right guys, you're not gonna believe this. Chase just told me that he can't bring his electric eel on the plane back to Kentucky. So I had to shoot home from work. I just got off the train. Uh, the guy, or Uber with the eel, supposed to be at my place in 10 minutes. I'm about 10 minutes away, so I gotta hurry a little bit here on a run. And a quick update, guys. So basically, Chase came and visited this weekend. And on his way home, he bought a two-foot electric eel. Um, he was gonna bring it back to Kentucky. The airlines told him he could bring it originally he just called me basically at the airport and said that he can't he put the the eel in an uber and now i'm running home to intercept that uber basically just had to drop everything at work and come back home and it's about a 20 minute train ride and seven minute walk back to my place eel's gonna be at my place any minute and probably still about four minutes away so stay tuned got a little bit of live action looks like the cops are here they're coming to pick up the eel cops are coming to pick up the eel all right guys we got the eel do you have a for, for Nate yeah okay yeah uh, this is interesting Oh, uh, we're getting the, getting the eel. Thank you. All right, guys. So we just got the eel from the Uber driver. Literally right here. Two foot long electric eel. I, I really can't believe I'm doing this. God, Chase. Chase, you really owe me. So I basically just got to drop off my bag from work. And I think I'm going to bring this to the local pet store, Pacific Aquarium. I know the owner, Chi, he's been super nice to me in the past. Bought a few things from him. So, that's the plan. If Chi doesn't come through, I don't know who's gonna come through. So, yeah, electric eel. <laughs> One guy saw me carrying it and say electric eel and he's just like, yo, he's like, yo. I'm just like, yeah, we have an electric eel. Don't freak out. <laughs> okay, well, I have a story for you. I'm trying to see if you guys will take this. What's a big bowl? It is an electric eel. Oh, electric? Yes. I'm gonna film this just because it's crazy what's happening. But so, quick story. My friend visited. She actually knows me, so if he's here, you he can call him back. But my friend was going back to Kentucky. He was trying. To he was trying to bring it on a plane and what happened is they told him he can't bring it after he talked to them about a month ago saying he could bring it so he ubered the the eel back from laguardia to me i had to sprint home from work that's why i'm sweating to get this guy so i know chi i don't have the capabilities to take care of this thing but i'm hope but i'm hoping chi will take it all right guys so we talked to the store owner and thankfully, she is going to take it. 
allergic to that much. But if you're allergic to a lot of things, like me, you could die if you touch it. Oh boy. Oh, oh yeah, I'm gonna be hit on a Wednesday. Don't touch the water. I think he's gonna be good. Hey. Savior. Oh, he's beautiful. He's beautiful. Hey, buddy. Oh, he's so cute. <laughs> you know, I see him in, um, in Amazon, right? He's looking healthy, though, so that is good. Got him in a temporary tank, to be clear, just out of the bag. We're going to eventually get this guy a long-term home. All right, guys, so I just got home, got out of my work clothes, but thank you so much to Pacific Aquarium and Chi, the owner, and his whole team. They were an absolute grace of God. Uh, they took in the two foot, actually it was like two and a half feet once we got it out of the bag, electric eel. They got it in a temporary tank. They moved some of their koi fish and gave the eel its own tank. In the meantime, we're trying to find a long-term home for him or uh, a bigger tank at Cheese Pacific Aquarium store. So that is where things ended off that day. Um, Nate was an absolute savior that he was able to even get the fish. Like, mind you, that fish was gonna be dropped off at his doorstep outside in the streets of New York. So just the fact that that had to happen completely sucked, but Nate saved the day. And then also Chi at Pacific Aquarium for helping us out. And mind you, the fact that the fish was an electric eel had nothing to do with the fact that it wasn't allowed on the plane. It was just the fact that it was a fish itself. But guys, like I said, they had told me previously that I could do this 100%. Now you're probably asking Chase, why didn't you just ship this fish? Well, I didn't ship this fish because if you guys have seen in some of my last videos, FedEx and UPS have been taking like two or three days to deliver my packages here and all my fish have been arriving dead. So that's why I wanted to go up there, fly with it and take it home with me. That way I knew it would be 100% okay. Now, thankfully we were able to find Glizzy a temporary home at the fish store, but things with Delta did not end there, guys. This is now Fish King versus Delta Airlines. Delta is a massive company. And guys, the Fish King LLC, it's just me, baby. I'm fighting this thing, I'm standing up for what is right. I feel like the fact of the matter of how they handle this situation, them telling me to throw it away, them telling me to kill my eel, and them telling me that I could bring it on and then I get there and they're not even willing to work with me at all, based on the things that they had already previously told me, really made me mad and frustrated. So the next day, I went and called Delta Airlines and told them what happened. And basically the lady was super nice on the phone. She goes, sir, I'm sorry this happened. You're gonna have to go online, fill out this giant form, and basically type up your problem, what happened, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, ma'am, this problem is way above that. I wanna fly to the Delta corporate office, like tell me where it is and I'll be there tomorrow because I was so pissed off at this point. She's like, you know, we don't have a corporate office, blah, 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 blah. And, I, and I'm not done, I'm like, I just wanna let you know, ma'am, I filmed this entire thing that went down at the airport yesterday. Your girl telling me to kill my animal, throw in the trash. I have all the phone records of this, everything like that. And she's like, I understand, sir, and hangs up the phone. So I'm like, okay. I'm gonna go online and film on a form, I guess, because, yeah. Well, a couple hours later, I got a call from somebody from Atlanta where Delta's corporate office is. And it was basically a lady saying, Hey, sir, um, oh my gosh, I can't believe this happened to you yesterday. Like, I heard that you filmed the whole thing. So mind you guys, they did not give a about what went down until they found out that I filmed the entire thing. So imagine if I didn't film any of this, they would not have cared a single bit. But once they found out, I guess, that I filmed it, I get a call a few hours later from one of their executives at Delta Corporate, basically saying, oh my gosh, sir, we're taking this so seriously. Um, please send us the footage immediately. We need to watch it. I want to look it over. And I'm like, yeah, of course you do because you want to see what your supervisor said. She's like, I was so wrong, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, okay, I'll think about it. Beep. Put the phone down. And so now, after talking to my team, I was like, hell no, I'm not gonna release the footage. I'm not sending you guys the footage that happened that day. I'm gonna post it up on the Fish King YouTube for the whole world to see. So here we are, guys. After talking with my legal team, the video is finally going up. And so basically where things have left off is my two foot glizzy, the electric eel is up in New York still at the fish store, it's doing amazing. It has now been about three weeks since this all went down and I'm still seeking compensation from Delta. I literally told Delta, all I wanna do 
is just get my two foot electric eel home to me here in Kentucky. Is that that hard to do? But no, instead of not responding to me, now I'm having to take matters in my own hands, pull all kinds of phone records, pull records from that day, pull footage, and go through this whole process just to get my two foot American eel that couldn't go on the commercial airline with me after they said it could. Isn't that crazy? So right now, I really just need your all support. What happened that day was absolutely insane. I feel like it was so wrong. And so I wanted to post it on here for you guys to see the honest truth of what happened that day. And as you guys know, Delta is a massive company, I'm sure with a ginormous legal team. So if anything happens to me, you guys know who did it. I literally just won my eel back, guys. Delta, the ball's in your all's court. I'm sorry things had to go down this way, but I literally just won my eel. I don't want anybody fired from this. I don't want it to go any further. I literally just want my two foot electric eel back home with me here in Kentucky. That's all I want and I'll do whatever it takes to make that happen.